Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we have a look at what we call Deep Learning 12. Deep Learning 12 is our better version of the NVIDIA DGX1. We're using a Gigabyte G481 S80 server and NVIDIA Tesla P100 GPUs. This is what the server looks like, and I already have taken uh, the liberty of building out the server quite a bit. And I just wanted to take a quick progress shot and show everybody how this looks after the GPUs, CPUs, memory have all been installed. We've also installed a lot of the NICs. And so this is just a good opportunity to see things before it all gets covered up by heat sinks and air shrouds. I want to show the CPU area off because I think a lot of people don't look at the innovation that happens with these servers around some of the more standard parts. And so what I'm going to show you right here is what Gigabyte did in the front of the server. So the front of the server has a PCIe expansion slot that's front facing. And this PCIe expansion slot you can use for things such as InfiniBand cards. You can also use it for 40, 50 gig networking, your basic networking. And this is front mounted, which goes along with the front mounted management ports, front mounted one gig ethernet, all of that stuff that isn't the high performance GPU and networking goes up front. Here we have a ConnectX4 40 and 56 gigabit Ethernet NIC installed. And Gigabyte actually offers a Omnipath option in this server chassis. So when you take a look behind that partition, what you see is two Skylake CPUs. So Intel Xeon Scalable has a number of enhancements to move data from the PCIe to the host CPU cores and vice versa. There are a number of enhancements over the Xeon E5 generation. The NVIDIA DGX1 still uses the Broadwell series of Intel Xeon E5 2600v4 CPUs. So this is an upgrade, and that's why we're calling this the DGX 1.5, because it's upgraded to the newest technology. Beyond Skylake CPUs, one of the other kind of cool things you get is you get the ability to use six-channel memory. So you get hex-channel memory, whereas Xeon E5 was only quad channel memory. What that means is you get 50% or more uh, bandwidth, which is an awesome capability that the DGX1 didn't have and this Gigabyte server has. So you can see you have two large heat sinks, you have a storage array up front, you have these fans. Now a lot of server chassis actually use redundant fans. So looking at the chassis, one of the interesting things that this has is it has two fans, so it is redundant fans, and these fans have to move a lot of air because these GPUs can use up to you know, 250 or 300 watts a pop. So what they actually do with these Gigabyte servers is they have stacked fans. So they have one fan on top of another, which provides redundancy. A lot of these fans are actually set up in servers so that they're hot swap, and they're very easy to move. And you can see that these have grommets to remove vibration, but with these fans moving so much air, what you would actually see is these things would vibrate too much and that would cause problems in the rack. So what this system has is it has screws that make sure that these fan trays don't vibrate too much. One area that I wanted to talk about was the daughter board that the GPUs are connected to. It's actually a marvel of engineering, and let me show you why. So the first thing that you'll see is that there are an array of cables and power cables that connect the main system board to this daughter board. This allows the daughter board to be modular and upgraded over time. You needed a different daughter board for the Tesla P100 Pascal generation versus the Volta V100 generation. This is actually the V100 generation, although we have the Tesla P100s in here. The P100s are back, or can go into this daughter board, but the V100s can't go into the P100 daughter board, and that's just the way it is. So, this is modular, and that's the number one point. The second point that's really cool about this is the PCIe switch array. So each of these PCIe switches has a by 16 link back to the CPUs. But it also has two NVIDIA Tesla P100 SXM GPUs installed and connected to the switch. And then each of the switches also has a by 16 port, which is meant for networking. So we have our Mellanox Connect X4, 100 gig NICs, and each one of these NICs is connected to two GPUs via a switch. All of the GPUs are connected using a technology called NVLink. NVLink is a faster communication channel than PCIe, 
Volta, it was a major upgrade over Pascal, but the key idea is that either one is way faster than going over PCIe bus. The last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is some of the features that you find on the back of the server. The first one is this little module, which is interesting. Uh, on the back of this, you actually have a OCP mezzanine slot. So here we have our dual 25 gig ethernet, which will provide kind of basic data services to this box. And this kind of just plugs right in the back. Kind of cool way to do it. Not overly notable otherwise. The other thing I want to talk about were the power supplies. So these power supplies, there are actually four power supplies. These are made by Delta. They're 80 plus platinum certified, and that's for efficiency. But they're also 2.2 kilowatts each, which means that this chassis has a total of 8.8 .8 kilowatts worth of power supplies in there. What that means is that there's 8.8 .8 kilowatts of redundant power, so you can withstand a power supply failing while you're training a multi-day model. <laughs> One of the cool things about the NVIDIA Tesla P100 and V100 SXM2 GPUs are that they use a technology called chip on wafer on silicon. And what that basically means is that instead of the memory for the GPU being on the PCB and the GPU chip being put onto that same PCB and the electrical wires all running through PCB, instead you have a silicon in interconnect between the different packages. In this case, you have this stuff called high bandwidth memory which are the four packages, or the four little die that you can see on the outside of the main GPU die. And what that allows you to do is have higher performance, higher bandwidth memory, and a more compact packaging, which makes these SXM2 modules possible, and therefore Deep Learning 12 possible.